Hey everyone, if you're watching this video, it's because you love Princess Alora from the bottom of your heart and you want to cosplay her or you're trying to make a cosplay for somebody and you have no idea how to make the cape. I did some research and I'm going to take you along the journey of me making my cape for Princess Alora and hopefully this video will help some of y'all out there in the known universe. Um, I'm not an expert. There's gonna be a lot of mistakes, but you know, as the great philosophers from High School Musical once said, we're all in this together. So, <laughs> that being said, without further ado, um, welcome to my DIY Princess Alora cosplay, the cape. Yay! <laughs> um, here are the basic things you're gonna need to make this cape. So you're gonna need dark blue fabric, pink fabric, white fabric, and some yellow bias tape. I bought this single fold, but I don't know how that's gonna turn out if I put it onto the dark blue fabric later on. Maybe, maybe buy a double fold bias tape, but we'll see how it goes and we'll adjust the material accordingly. Um, two other things you want to consider buying also the first thing being um, Something to close the cape in the front so you can either do buttons and a string or you can do like metallic clasp thingy that close very fancy Oh, and um, the second thing you want to get is Blue fabric, but you want a light blue and you don't want a lot of it to be honest You just need a little little bit so try and check out your local fabric store or Walmart to see if they have like those pre-cut samples and you're just gonna need very little bit so don't go overboard with it just use whatever you have in, in hand and that's all you're gonna need for this project also guys don't ask me how much material you need I buy two meters of everything because I have no idea how measurements work okay and it scares me shitless buying not enough so yeah I always buy two meters of everything unless I got my me measurements precisely down and I can like not be wasteful when I buy stuff. But yeah, two meters of everything. Yuppie! So let me take you along the pieces you're gonna need. You're gonna need to make six pieces in total that we're gonna sew together. That you're gonna sew together. So you have the left flap, the back piece, the right flap, the left wing, the right wing, and the collar. So before we go ahead, I'm gonna show you how I did the measurement for A, B, and C. And those are gonna be your three key me measurements to make all of this happen. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. So the measurements are done like this. Um, find where your nipple is. I mean, I'm doing it on my own, so it's kind of hard. But like, where your nipple ends, I'm gonna do it like this. Where your nipple ends, you're gonna measure like that, and then that point here, like that point here, all the way through the back and onto the other side. That's your A measurement. Okay, your B measurement is gonna be from here, like where your neck is, all the way down to the same nipple line. Now make sure it's straight when you measure it. That's gonna be your measurement B, and your measurement C is gonna be from that same point on all the way to wherever the wings end on your body, like proportionate to your body. Um, I have boobs, but it wasn't restricting me. So if you have, uh, if you are bigger chested, you're gonna have to do like the according readjustments. But those are your three basic measurements. Okay. Yay. Once you note down the measurements, you're gonna use measurements A and B to make a rectangle, and then you're gonna sketch out the curves for this uh, for the back piece, and it's gonna give you something like that. Make sure you make the shoulders curvy, okay, guys? If you make them square like a box, I will guarantee you it will not work. I did it before, and it did not work, and I had to redo everything from the start, okay? So make sure you make it extra curvy. Curves are beautiful, guys. And then fold in half to make sure everything is even. Okay, yes, in case you're wondering, it is Christmas wrapper. That's what I had in hand, okay? Let's find solutions to our problems, okay? Once you got that, you're gonna take it over another piece of uh, whatever you're using to make your patterns. You're gonna draw it a second time, and that's gonna be your template for the flap. So the right flap and the left flap. So um, the curves are nice and curvy, and they're like, like that, okay? You're gonna retrace the curves, and then you're gonna use that to make your pattern like that. And then once you got this and that, you're gonna cut out one piece, 
one big piece like the big piece. You're gonna cut out one in black and one in blue, one in white, and for this one you're gonna cut out two in blue and two in white. And I'll show you what it gives you once you got all the pieces. So once you have all your pieces cut out and assembled and ready to go to the sewing machine, you should have one back piece, one left flap, and one right flap. Shout out to my teddy bear collection. Shout out to Stitch, the OG. Anyways, so all this is ready to go into the sewing machine. For the left and right flap, you're gonna sew it completely closed. Um, completely closed. Um, there's no right or wrong side for my fabric. Um, it just looks both the same way either way and um for this piece make sure you make sure you leave this bottom piece open do not sew it i repeat do not sew this piece because we need this to stay open okay okay thank you for your cooperation as you can see the flap is completely closed and the back piece is still open here and then the other flap is also completely closed what you want to do next is put the blue sides together okay the, once the blue sides are going to be together you're just going to sew this part here like this and you're going to sew it into here like this blue sides together and you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side so i'll be back so this is what the cape looks like so far as you can see um like the front part here it's like digs into my neck so i'm going to cut it down a little bit more once I get the collar done and the shoulders I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with it because it fits more or less fine when I have my arms down but as soon as I have my arms up it like poofs back up so I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now and keep working on the rest of the cosplay and see how it goes now that we got the top part of the cape done we're gonna focus on the bottom part which are the left and the right wing okay so you're gonna need your C measurement and you're gonna need your A measurement because we're gonna use that A to calculate here, right here. So, um, yeah, your C measurement doesn't change, but to calculate the D measurement here, you're gonna need to put the A, your A measurement here. So D is gonna equal A divided by two. And then you're gonna take that number and add four inch to that, and then four inch plus how much seam allowance you're gonna need because these two pieces the left and the right wing need to overlap each other so that's why you're going to divide it in half and then you're going to add at least four inches to the design and once you got that you just draw it on the, whatever paper you have and you make sure it's like a nice little flower petal like that okay okay and i'm going to show what it looks like in the end so to make the pink pieces that have to go inside the wings all you're gonna do is take this pattern that you use to make the big wing and then you're gonna cut off a little bit on the side depending on how thick you want cut as much as you need and this brown part here is the part you're gonna cut off and then you're gonna use the, um, use that to make the new pattern for the pink piece and then you're gonna add it on top i just always fold my fat my i just fold everything in half always for equal proportions everywhere so yeah so i'm gonna fold it and then cut it and then use that to make as a pattern for the pink piece and i'll be back and i'll show you what it looks like so now that i have my two pink inner pieces i'm gonna take each of the pink pieces and i'm gonna like fold over the seam allowance and then close like stitch it so it's neatly done and then after that i'm gonna stitch it to the white piece and then after that i'm gonna stitch it to the blue piece so that's what i'm gonna do that's what we gotta do two times is it just me or both pinks aren't the same hmm this is problematic so there's no more natural sunlight because um i took a break and then i came back and the sun was gone because such is life anyways um i finished the wings now i'm gonna make the collar so i'm just gonna measure like the height here of my neck and i'm gonna measure the like circumference and use those two measurements to make a long rectangle cut one piece in blue one piece in white sew them together and then i'm gonna show you how i pin it to the other piece and sew those two together yes question mark 
okay so as you can see the collar has been attached um the measurement was too long and it wouldn't stay stiff so i just folded it in half re-sew it and it worked out better this way anyways so now that the collar is attached we are ready for bias tape and this is the last big part of this cosplay what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the bias tape all around the wings and then you're gonna overlap the wings put them inside here you're gonna put it inside here and then you're gonna sew it shut and then after that you're gonna keep going with the bias tape on the top part and after that everything should be done i will do a demonstration so for bias tape um i applied it on all the pieces just to make sure i have enough to go over everything and thank god i do i'm gonna show you how to actually sew it into place so when you get i use the single fold bias tape and it comes up like this okay so what you're gonna do is that you're gonna open it okay and just where that fold is you're gonna you're gonna sew it onto the edge here okay and then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna sew it onto that into the crease but like on the edge of the of the wing okay and you're gonna do that all around and then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have to flip it like this okay you're gonna flip it like this and then you're gonna pin it all the way down like i did here so as you can see it's all been pinned all around and then you have to sew it into place and that's what you have to do for one two and three so um yeah that's what i'm gonna do now also guys quick side note this right here is all the yellow thread I have left so always remember to check inventory before going to the fabric store and I also ran out of the blue thread just as I was finishing this project uh, using it like I don't need any more blue but I finished the blue just when I was done actually needing it so like by I missed it by a hair guys so like don't be like me don't play yourself check your inventory I might have to do a trip to the Walmart because I'm trying to finish this. But I'm also not trying to leave the house because this cold factor is not really appealing. But you know, such is life. So I'm getting ready to sew on the bias tape. Um, I just want to let you guys know that this part here is yellow, but the underneath part is white. So when you set up the, the thread, you need to make sure that the bobbin that's inside the machine in here is gonna be the white thread because that's gonna go on the bottom with the white fabric and the thread that comes out from the top here that comes out from that nice little place here on top that has to be the yellow thread i hope that made sense because when you're gonna sew it this part here is gonna be all yellow and then this all part here is gonna be all white and it's gonna be all super nice okay yes okay this is the best way I found to make the corners with the bias tape. What you're gonna do is that you're gonna take, there's two sides, right? So you're gonna take one side, ugh. you're gonna take one side and stitch it all the way to the edge of the fabric, okay? And then whatever is left over, snip it a little bit and then fold it in before you fold it in before you do the whole flippity flip and sew it down and it's going to give you something like this okay and then what you're going to do is that with the other side um, when it comes time to close it down you're going to flip it in again this side cut it and then flip it in like that something like that and then you're going to close it shut and then it's going to give you like a cute little corner and that's the best way i found to make it so now I added the bias tape on all the pieces. So for the wings, all the bias tape is done. And I put the bias tape only on the collar part for now because the sides here, when I do the bias tape for the sides, they have to connect to the outside of the wing. So I'm leaving these for now. What's gonna happen is that I'm gonna open this, fold it in, and then since the fold isn't staying in place, I'm actually gonna iron over it and then I'm gonna tuck these in, straight stitch across, and then close the bias.
by state on the side. And then it should be like 97% done. I cannot believe it. So as you can see, ironing down your fabric means that the folds stay in place and it's so much easier to work with. So now I'm just going to check my reference piece, tuck it everything in, pin it into place, and then make a nice straight stitch. Just like that. And then I'm going to work on the bias tape on the sides. This is the second time it happens. Look guys, this is all the thread I have left in blue. I played myself. Um, I have enough to make the straight stitch to attach the wings, but inventory before you leave because otherwise you're going to be stuck with like situations such as this one and you're going to be stuck panicking. This whole project was such a close call for me, especially when it comes to thread. I can't believe how lucky I am. Wow. So as you can see um, through the mirror and behind me also, um, the cape is now 95% done. The leftover 5% is what I like to consider detail work. So any um, flying thread that you need to cut off, like for example, I can see this right here. Any of that you need to cut off. Um, the buttons you need to attach here to make sure everything stays in place. And the little like blue spot here. And also, in my case, I also have to do this right here. Um, the wings and the flaps need to be like closed and like attached together but that's all going to be handwork and after that this cape is done um if i can find my tripod or if my sister comes home um i will be filming myself in the cape and in the princess allura skirt so you can get an idea of how it looks together <laughs> And there you have it guys, the complete cape for Princess Alora from Voltron. Thank you so much for watching. And um, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Kurosaki Cosplay because she recommended me to actually look up Princess Anna. Yes, from Frozen, Princess Anna's cape. And I used that advice to make the template for Alora's cape and it helped out really, really really a lot so thank you a lot to kurozaki cosplay a link in the description to her youtube channel and you should also check out her instagram because her cosplay is out of this world get it because voltron is space and yes okay good night guys